What's up guys, Evil D here, and today I want to speak about why you should include Esperanto on your resume. Now the reason I'm covering this is simple. Yesterday I went to a job interview and I believe it helped me out a lot, and second I see people asking about this, so I figured, you know what, I'm going to give my opinion. I'm a YouTuber, I have an opinion, you're going to listen. <laughs> Okay, so the best way to show you why is to give you my history. Um, I learned Esperanto when I was in the army. After I left the army, obviously I was looking for a job. I decided not to include it in my resume because I thought it would make me look silly. Took a while, I eventually found a job. Uh, after that, I decided, you know, time to progress my career. I started looking for jobs again, but this time I was going to include Esperanto at the end of the resume in the interest section, one word, because this was something I was passionate about. I'd taken part in non-profits, I'd done a lot of stuff in the Esperanto movement, so I figured I'm going to include it. What's the worst that could happen? Some guy will look at it, laugh at it, and go, yeah, Esperanto is so funny, no one speaks that. And then I wouldn't want to work with them anyway. So I included it, I went to a job interview, sat down, there was three people in front of me, you know how it is in every job interview, you sit on one side of the table and all the other people sit on the other. And there was three people, HR, infrastructure manager, and yes, it was a developer. So we were sitting there, they'll ask me the general questions. It was very like formal, cold. And then the developer jumped in and he goes, I, I just gotta ask, I gotta ask, you got Esperanto on your resume? I've heard about that before. I didn't think people spoke that. And then I started telling him about my experiences with the language and he was fascinated. And guess what? The other two became fascinated and I was sitting there going, that's really cool. By the end of the interview, it was no longer that static, cold feeling between us. It was more like just a friendly conversation. And I went home and the next day I got a call from the agent. I had landed the job. And I thought, you know what? It's obviously not because they want to learn Esperanto. It's just because it's so unique, okay? Obviously, this is not going to work when everyone speaks Esperanto. But for now, it's a very unique skill, okay? So if you've got any unique skill, it doesn't have to be Esperanto, but something really unique, put it on your resume because they look at it and they just can't help but ask. Then I went for my next job, the one that was right here that I had just quit recently. Um, I remember I sat down and I was speaking with the CEO and my direct manager, and because it was a small company, and my CEO, he has a heavy Israeli accent and he goes, look, uh, Richard, I see you were in the army for six years. So we are very, a multicultural company. I'm not sure you could work with the other people being soldier and everything. Uh, I'm not going to continue the accent. That was really hard as it was. Um, and then at that point I go, well, actually, if you look at the end of the resume, I also speak Esperanto. And I was about to explain it to him, but he'd actually heard about it before. And he goes, he, he was like, isn't that the language that disappeared in the 80s? And he knew what the concept was behind it. But once he realized that I spoke this, he then trusted that I would be someone who would be willing to work with people in a very multicultural environment. Anyway, I left, um, got the job the next day. And just before I left the job recently, I sat down at the CEO on the last day and he said, you know what, um, picking you was a really good choice. And then he asked me a few more questions about Esperanto. So he was interested. Yesterday, this is the biggest time it's helped me yet. Went to a job interview, um, contractor role. I'm doing contracting now. And I sat down, there was two people, a woman and a guy there. The guy, like when we sat down at the beginning of the interview, it was in the, the cafe of the actual place. We sat down and he got up and he went and got us a drink and the woman, like bent over and she goes, I see you speak Esperanto. You're the second Esperanto speaker I've ever met. And I was like, you've met another? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was in Brazil, I was in a hostel when I was younger and I met an Esperanto speaker there. And then I told her about my travels and she wanted to know more. Anyway, we spoke a little bit, then the other guy found out and then we spoke a little bit more about it and then we moved into the core of the interview and that's where we started speaking about management and stuff like that. It really helped break that ice. Again, it was like that icebreaker. And I feel that every person needs an icebreaker on their resume. Otherwise, you're basically the same as everyone else. And my unique skill is Esperanto. And that's why I think because you're an Esperanto speaker, most likely you are. Obviously, there's non-Esperanto speakers that watch my channel. But if you are, include it. It's going to help you out. That's basically it. So if you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, sub to the channel if you haven't already. And I just punched myself in the face. And I hope to see you all in the next video. I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> Kai kiel ciam mi vols dunki mia in subtenanto in para Patreon. Donatsu dolaron monate por certigi la estonton de ĉi tiu kanalo. Miaj ĝis nun ai donacantoj estas Sara, Jo, Miguel, Bad, Tommy, Alex, Jake, Rafa, Chuck, Craig, Marvin, The Igor, Kuba, Jacob, JZ Knuckles, Shane and Greg.